Welcome back, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the day so far. And I want to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our videos. Just hit the subscribe now button right below this video. And up next, we have Dave Phillips from Generational Wealth Strategies, and his topic is how to prepare for the coming tax doomsday. David, how are you doing today? I'm great. I really am. It's, it's, a, it's a good day to be here. Arizona's finally cooling down, and uh, uh, you know, it's, it's just great. All right. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, turn it over to you. You can pull up your PowerPoint, and we'll get started. Okay, very good. Well, let's let's kind of start out by the the main topic, which is how to prepare for the coming ta tax doomsday. And um, the, you know, the the key is that there's going to be some changes to the current tax laws that we have uh, if nothing happens. And uh, what I mean by nothing happens is there's no further legislation between now and the and 2025, December 31st of 2025. So that is a date that we have. Uh, it is actual law. It's been legislated. And so what I want to do today is I just want to talk about uh, how we can prepare for this and how, how we can prepare for, for what's going to happen. So back in uh, when President uh, Trump was first elected, he incorporated, as most of you know, the Tax Cut and Jobs Act. And in there was the biggest tax overhaul since 1986, for better or worse. There were some things that people liked, some things that people didn't like. But what it did give us was it gave us less individual deductions. It gave us a lower income tax bracket. It increased the child credit, lower corporate tax, decreased the capital gains tax, inc increased uh, the federal estate tax credit and the gift tax credit. So those are things that there's a lot of things that it did, believe me, but those were the main tenants of the Tax Cut and Jobs Act. Then we get President Biden who's elected and right away he talks about incorporating the Build Back Better Act and most of you've been following that, but these were some of the things that he wanted to incorporate and change. One of them was the estate tax credit reduce it from the 13 million to 3.5 million, increase the top rate to 45%, increase capital gains tax, possibly lose the step up in basis, eliminate the grantor trust, which is a, our tools that we use as state planners to help transfer assets, and the lifetime exclusion uh, would could be reduced, uh, the gift tax exclusion would be reduced to a million. So those are the big things that, that were in the Build Back Better Act. What and was it, be, what was it before the million? Hey, hey, Dave, what was it before the, before it was the million? Like how far down did it go? Before. Oh, which, which? The gift tax? Yeah, yeah, the million dollars. He said it went down to a million. What was it before? Yeah, well, the, that, well, the million, yeah, that's a good point. The million, it was a million dollars before he, uh, Trump was even elected. And then, uh, but he... But they unified it, um, and so the gift tax and the estate tax were the same. And so we'll talk about that a little bit later okay. here about how you can take advantage of that. But but the idea was right now it's unified, so I could give while I'm alive thirteen million dollars to my kids, and for me and and Jane could do the same thing. But the the point is that these these things are little uh, the shell game. Remember that shell game that used to be played and maybe seen it at the carnival or whatever. Oh, There's yeah. always a plant inside here in the in the audience, and they kind of know you know where the shell actually is and where the peanut is. And so uh, politicians have been using these tools, and we know that Mansion and Cinema stopped the Build Back Better Act. I mean, it was, it basically stopped it. And so uh, fortunately, and, and, and again, I'm not, I don't want to be, sound like I'm partisan one way or the other. That's not really the important thing. I'm just the, the reporter here. And I'm just telling you that the Build Back Better Act had some significant changes in it that were going to impact the, the, our world, the state planning and, and tax planning world. And uh, it got, it got basically dumped. And so as a result, we have in place this Tax Cut and Jobs Act, but it's set to be repealed on December 31st, 2025, unless something happens between now and then. So 
what we're going to see is we're going to see tax brackets to pre-tax uh, cut levels. We're going to see the reduction of the child credit, which is not that big of a deal for a lot for for our clients, but it, it is for some. But the federal estate tax credit is going to get reduced, as well as the gift tax is going to get reduced. And so this is kind of your chart. This is your sunset. This is they call it the sunset provision here. And you can kind of see this is how the chart is going to look. And uh, you know, I, I think it's key to understand that uh, this is not only going to automatically the, the our estate tax and gift tax is automatically going to sunset back to somewhere around $6 million, uh, it's going to significantly in, 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 uh, decrease our ability to do some transferring while we're alive. Right now, we can do about 13 million. Next year, it's actually going to increase the exclusion for 2024 to another, about another 700,000. And the annual exclusion is gonna increase from 17 to 18. So those are things that we know. But 2025 and forward, we don't really know. On December 31st, we really don't know what's going to happen. So the key, Roger, is that our listeners, and the reason why we created Generational Wealth Strategies newsletter now is because you need to understand what the rules of engagement are today, and you need to make your moves now. Uh, we have... Uh, you know, about 800 days left here before things go crazy. I think it's 800 days. Sarah, Sarah told me exactly how many days it was. But, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, we don't have a lot of time. So some of the moves that we need to make are going to be our big moves, and, and they take some time. So you can't wait until the last minute, the last hour, the last day, or you're going to get caught, and it's not going to, it's not going to be a, a good op option for you and your family. So let's talk about a couple strategies, just to really right now strategies. One of them we call is in, income harvesting. You know, with the tax credits that, uh, the, the tax brackets, I'm sorry, that, that Trump set up, you'll notice that there's this anomaly right here uh, where the tax bracket goes from 22 to 24. It doesn't make any sequential sense to me. There's no rith the, the arithmetic here or math here. It's just it's weird. But you'll notice that filing jointly in 2023, uh, I could stay in the top bracket, a 24% bracket, and, and, and together, my wife and I could make 364000 We would never pass that 24% bracket. Effective tax would be somewhere around 15%, probably, at, at about $350,000. So the point is, if you are making under that, you need to take advantage of this bracket because this is the lowest they've been in 80 years. And, and, and so how do you do that? How do you, how do you take advantage of that? Well, one of them is to do some Roth conversions. There's also another option that you can do, and that's called the Roth on steroids option, which we'll talk about here in a few minutes. So there's some strategies that you can do to implement to take advantage of what, uh, what we have right now. Well, one of the, and, and, and by the way, when you do that, you need to consider your income taxes in your state. Some states do have income taxes still. Some of them are pretty hefty. Well, we know back in, in 2018, the SECURE Act was passed, and it was effective 2019. And the SECURE Act really impacted uh, our IRAs. And when we do our estate plans, we find that the, the vast majority of wealth Big well is in the IRAs, you know, the IRA conversions that they did from 401ks and, and whatnot, and the money is just sitting there. And a lot of folks just like to store it. Uh, they don't actually like to spend it. That's really the number one strategy is you should spend that money because that money is not uh, good money to transfer to your heirs. And again, we're talking about estate planning now. And so the 2019 Secure Act is the stealth estate tax. It's the birth of that 10-year rule, and I think most everybody knows it by now. It's, it's uh, we've been hammering this for for quite a while, and I feel I feel like Paul Revere a little bit, you know, because I was screaming and yelling, "This was going to happen," and and people just didn't, you know, a lot of people, some people listened, but a lot didn't listen, and it's the same with this, uh, you know, with our uh, our forthcoming 
tax doomsday, I feel like Paul Revere, you've got to make these moves now. Uh, you can't wait until October or November, you know, of 2024, uh, 2025. It's just not going to work. And so you got to make these moves now. But anyway, back to the SECURE Act, it incorporated that 10 year rule, which led to an, an, uh, an income tax to our beneficiaries on all our qualified money, all our IRAs, 401ks, and, and they have to have that entire account depleted within 10 years uh, that they inherited. Now, m most it won't be a problem because some IRAs are small and you inherit a $100,000 IRA. You know, you use it to, to uh, help pay down your mortgage or something like that and pay all the tax in one year. But it, the tax that the kids end up paying is going to be to our um, – it, it, it's going to be to their income tax bracket, whatever their income tax bracket is. So you have a child that's making pretty good money and you throw in their lap a million dollar IRA. That's, you know, they have to, they have to deal with that for at least a 10 year period of time. Well, then we also had secure act 2.0 that was passed last year. And, and I know Bob Carlson in his newsletter talks a lot about these things and, and does a fabulous job in doing that in the retirement watch. But, uh, but we know that the RMD now is, is in, the age is now 73. So in, in the previous RMD on a million dollar account, it was 36,000 because it was at age 72 and it was a different bracket. Now it's at, it's at 73. And so it's actually the required minimum distribution is actually a little bit more, uh, but it doesn't start until you're 73. So, those are kind of the, the, the key principles there of this 2.0. There's a, there was a whole bunch of stuff, but the things that really impacted us was this, uh, was the, uh, the new RMD schedule and the fact that we could put uh, $200,000 in a qualified longevity annuity contract that called the QLAC. And, uh, and that we could use that from our IRA account. We could actually transfer it into a QLAC and it would reduce our total IRA and give us guaranteed income for the future. So those are kind of the things uh, Todd Phillips in his column, uh, Safe Money uh, column in the, in the Generational Wealth Newsletter, he talks a lot about this and tells us actually which QLAC is the best QLAC in the country today. He, does, he gives a monthly report on which one is the best one. So you, you, that's one of the advantages of reading our newsletter is that you get that column from Todd and, and the, the report on which QLAC is the best. But so it, you should take advantage of these things that are, that are, that are available to us today. Um, the, uh, you know, if we keep our IRA the, the way it is set up right now, we're actually playing right into Uncle Sam's hand. It, it, hoarding an IRA, and, and a lot of folks do this because I, I evaluate a lot of the states and I see these huge IRA accounts and I'm going, well, why do you have that? Well, just in case, you know, that, that happens, uh, you know, the economy goes bad or whatever and I have money and I, I, I don't know, I just, you know, I've got other money that's coming in and I just don't need it. Well, but that's playing right into Uncle Sam's hands. And uh, IRA is simply an IOU to the IRS. And people sometimes just don't get it. You've never paid tax on that money ever. You haven't paid tax on the, the deposit, uh, you, on the principal. You have not paid taxes on the interest. Someday, taxes have to be paid. Income taxes have to be paid, and sometimes estate taxes, depending on how big your estate is. And so the point is that you can't keep playing into Uncle Sam's hand. You, you have to... Uh, plan around this and start and start getting rid of some of this money, this, these, these qualified accounts. The SECURE Act is just a, a accelerates and exasperates this problem here because now our kids have to take all the money in a 10 year period of time that they inherit. So it, it's, it's a way to get around that. Well, the, the key thing right now is, do you do a Roth? Uh, do you plan around this? Do you? And, and one of the strategies is is an absolute is to do a Roth conversion. Uh, and, and we all know the the tenets of a Roth conversion, but we're taking something that is 
taxable and we're going to create tax free. But to do that, we have to pay taxes to make the conversion. So you want to make sure that you convert during the sweet spot, which is 59 and a half to 73. And take advantage of these, this, these tax brackets that we have right now that I showed you earlier in the earlier slide, uh, because they're not going to get any lower. <clears throat> I can't foresee that they will. <clears throat> Everybody projects higher tax brackets. And so I think that's going to happen for sure. And so right now we have this year and next year that we can take advantage of these low tax brackets. Uh, and so we need to do that. You also, when you do the Roth conversions, look for some kind of tax offset or oil and gas investments that you can do to, uh, to offset uh, a conversion. But the key is you're going to take that IRA that's taxable and you're going to convert it to a tax free. The problem with an IRA, uh, a, a Roth conversion, I'm sorry, a, problem is it's only worth what it is worth. In other words, if I have a uh, an IRA and I convert that IRA uh, to a Roth and I pass, and let's say it's a million dollars and I pass away the next day, that million dollars is all my family gets. I've actually found what I call strategy number five in, uh, in, a, uh, in, the, in this IRA concept and it's called the Holy Grail, the perfect conversion tool. Uh, and it's explained in, uh, in our report, the Bombshell Battle Plan report, that you guys can get through Generational Wealth uh, Newsletter. You just have to subscribe to the newsletter and you can get, take advantage of this particular report. But I explain this, the whole idea of uh, the, uh, the Holy Grail, the perfect conversion tool. So anyway, uh, in that... I'm going to kind of give you uh, – how much time do we have, Roger? Uh, we got about 12 minutes. 12 minutes. Okay, good. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about the uh, what I call this perfect conversion tool. And, and there's several elements of it. There's what's called the RMD leverage strategy. So that's the required minimum distribution leverage strategy. That's a tool. The wealth creation strategy the family bank strategy. Probably my favorite one is the Roth on steroids strategy. So, uh, and, and the IRA reboot strategy and the twist of charity with your IRA. So you can see there's six strategies that all encompass this perfect conversion tool. And you can choose combination of these uh, or just one of them. Uh, if you have a large estate, and you're going to have an estate tax problem that your kids are, especially if they get that credit down to $6 million, uh, then you're going to probably want to focus on the wealth creation strategy. If you have a, a, a really sizable IRA and the kids are going to have to pay income taxes on the inherited IRA, you're probably going to want to do either the RMD leverage strategy or the Roth on Roy strategy. So, in that report that I showed you earlier, the bombshell battle plan report, I explain each of these strategies, each of these options that you have. So let's talk about one of them. Let's talk about the RMD strategy. What, what, what should you do with your RMD? Uh, well, obviously you convert it to income. It's required distribution that comes to you. Uh, but I, I suggest that you don't wait until 73 to start taking that money out. I think you should start taking the money out as soon as possible and start depleting that, that IRA account because why? It's a taxable account. You're hoarding it. Start to, start, start to peel it out and take advantage of this tax bracket management that I was suggesting earlier. And, and so maximize your, your, your distribution. But let's just stick with the concept of required distribution just for a second. Uh, if I have a, a, an IRA that's worth a million dollars, I'm gonna, I, would, I wanna transfer some of that, my, my required distribution, into a supercharged gift that will guarantee that gift for, uh, for the future for my children. And I'll have complete control of it while I'm alive and it's totally tax-free inheritance. So here's how it would work. Let's say I have George and Sarah who are 72. Now again, 
you should actually do this before 72 or 73. I mean, as soon as you can do this move, do this move. You don't have to wait until the RMD kicks in. But let's just assume that my RMD net after tax is going to be $29,000 on a million dollar IRA because that's that's based on the the current tables that we have. But this is the net after tax and I and I'm assuming a 25% tax, 24% tax bracket. So the net after tax is is 39 is $29,000. So if I give that $29,000 to my kids today, how much do they get? $29,000. Well, if I were to take that $29,000 and I were to use it to uh, either do a wealth creation strategy or the family bank strategy within the strategies that we that that I discussed with us earlier today, uh, that and we purchased a joint and survivor life insurance policy and a, called the wealth creation strategy, that $29,000 would create $1.5 million tax-free to my kids. What do my kids do with that money? They use that money to pay the taxes on the other IRA monies. Okay, that, that money is tax-free to my children. Uh, if I just left it in the Roth and, and did a Roth conversion of the $29,000, at the end of the first year, it would only be worth $30,000. In 10 years, that Roth, assuming I kept doing the 29000 every year, would be worth almost 400000 But my wealth creation would still be worth $1.6 million. In 20 years, the Roth would have in increased to, and this is, by the way, this is assuming 7% interest. Uh, the Roth would increase to a $1 million, and, but the, the wealth creation strategy would still be at the 1.6 million. So there's no way the Roth will ever, ever catch up to the life insurance. The, the other option would be to do the family bank strategy. And you can see the life insurance components less, but the cash accumulation in the life insurance policy is significantly greater than the wealth creation. So you, you might want to do, do that strategy instead. Uh, but the key is that a Roth is only worth what a Roth is worth. And if I were to take that Roth money and actually apply it, uh, whoops, sorry about that. If I were to apply it to the uh, the, the Roth on Roid stair, uh, strategy, it would be worth significantly more. Okay, so anyway, let's, let's talk about uh, the, the exclusions that we have right now. Currently, our gift exclusion is $17,000 a year per person. It's going to go up to 18 next year in 2024. Uh, and, and so uh, we could just give that gift to our kids, or we could go back and incorporate the RMD leverage strategy and use that gift to leverage it and you and create and 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 secure the wealth creation strategy for our kids and have them uh, significantly more than the seventeen thousand dollars that you you're that you are allowed to give every year. You can also use your lifetime gift exclusion right now, and right now that exclusion is at thirteen. Next year it'll be almost fourteen million, and you can actually get that money out of your estate, and it's never going to be. Uh, part of your estate again once you gift it out. That's a twenty-six million dollars per couple. So not a lot of not a lot of folks are running around the country that can even take advantage of that. But if you are, if you have assets that you want to transfer and get out of your estate, uh, this, these are things that you moves that you need to make before uh, de uh, December thirty-first, twenty twenty-four, and certainly. Uh, try to do it somewhere, you know, now or between now and then June of next year, because it gets a little difficult to make some of these moves uh, at the last moment. And you want to put those assets, you want to transfer them into what's called an irrevocable dynasty trust uh, with a limited partnership. So those are strategies that Rick Durfee in our newsletter, Generational Wealth Strategies, explains quite often. In fact, last month he had 
a column that talked about irrevocable dynasty trust funds, how to transfer assets now uh, into uh, to the kids. Okay, so let's minutes. talk one, one more. One, about five minutes. Okay, well we're we're on right on target here. So one of the problems with estate planning is that we you know we have the taxation, we have uh, strategies, uh, we have just a lot of a lot of issues that that are that are at hand. But one of the biggest problems that I see is that people make really poor investment choices, especially when they get older. They they start to make really poor decisions, and so as a result, the instead of transferring, um, you know, ten million dollar estate, they transfer a five million dollar. Well, that's still pretty good. But it's not 10 million because they lost money. So the question a lot of folks ask is, well, where should I invest? Should I stuff it under the mattress or should I go to Vegas? Uh, you know, and and Skousen in his newsletter, uh, Forecasts and Strategies, just recently said, now is the time to take some chips off the table and transfer your winnings into an indexed annuity. You know, I agree with Mark. I think that's a really good idea, especially when you get the older you get, you need to take some risk off the table. You know, you can't really be on, you know, on number twenty-six red. Uh, you, you you've got to take some, you know, you got to to know when to fold them and mm -hmm. and walk off the table. And so now is the time to do that, especially when you get older. And so you want to start taking advantage of some of these strategies that my son Todd, the president of estate planning specialist, and one of our contributor, contributing authors of Generational Wealth Strategies uh, that he does in his column, say the safe money column that he does every uh, every month. And uh, uh, I, I really like this safe money corner that, that he does because he not only gives us strategies that tell us how to get risk off the table, he also tells us which carriers we should look at which products we should look at right now and so and every month he has an updated column so i certainly think that that is a, a way in which you sh could take some chips off the table is to take some of your at-risk money and move it transfer it into uh, an, an, an annuity of some kind either an indexed annuity as mark said or a uh, an income annuity if you want to have an income play and just want to have guaranteed income for the rest of your life so in our in our newsletter, Generational Wealth Strategies, I do a column once a month called Strengthening Your Roots. Uh, Rick Durfee does a column uh, about the legal end, uh, the legal entities that uh, and, and, and estate planning strategies, uh, legal side of it. And Todd does the Safe Money Corner. And then Melody Gatz, who is the director of the Legacy Global Foundation, she does a column about charitable giving and, 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 and how to incorporate charities into it. So it's, it's four columns each month. Uh, you know, I'm telling you that the information is jam packed and it's very, very helpful information. Uh, each, each column is well thought out. Uh, and, uh, the, your editors take a tremendous amount of time, uh, to focus on helping us plan for, uh, this, tax doomsday that we know it's coming here and if we do nothing if nothing else happens if we don't have any new legislation coming into play and i don't know if you watched the debate the other day but my goodness they were just yelling and screaming at each other it i didn't really see that much of a debate i don't know uh you know what's going to happen with this election coming up uh but if nothing else nothing changes we have a tax doomsday on 2025, and we need to make sure that we prepare for it, plan for it. And Generational Wealth Strategies newsletter will help you do that. Yep. Yep. I think that's about it. I think I, I think. I, yeah. Go to the next the next uh, next slide. I think has our offer on it. Okay. Yeah. So I want to you know Generational Wealth Strategies, as Dave said, you know four contributors from four different angles. It's going to keep you up to date on any changes that happen. You know. We have the doomsday coming, but things can happen between now and then, and you want to stay up to date. If you, 
you just think about it, if you went to a lawyer and just to try to get some of the stuff, you're going to spend way more than you'd spend for a whole year of generational wealth strategies. It's normally two hundred and forty nine dollars. There'll be a special discount. It's only seventy seven dollars a year as part of this YouTube event. So we have a URL in the chat box right now. Click on that and that'll take you over to the special seventy seven dollars a year price. And Dave and his and his group is going to keep you up to date on all these very, very important things. And just one good idea can save you tens or tens of thousands of dollars easily. So it'll be the best $77 you spend all year. So click on that button now. Dave, thanks so much for uh, being part of our YouTube event today. Great information. I love the newsletter. Um, it's just so important you know, Eagle has gotten more, a little bit more into the, you know, helping you, not only do we help you get the money, but we help you protect it. And generational wealth strategies is one of the ways that we do that. So we're about halfway through the day. The first half of the day was more longer term horizons, your retirement planning. Second half, we're going to turn to more short term trading and what's going to be happening in the fourth quarter and how to best take advantage of, of uh, increasing your portfolio on a more shorter term basis. And we're going to kick that off the second half with another panel. So I'll be back in just a couple of minutes with our next panel. And reminder again, hit that button right below the video to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you in a couple of minutes.